All right. Hello, Metal Maniacs. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Prost. Uh, I am absolutely Oops. thrilled today. I am talking with the one and the only legendary bassist, uh, Mr. Christian Speezy Geisler. Speezy, thank you so very much for joining me today. How are you doing, sir? Oh, um, first, um, thank you for having me, and I'm doing well. Good. Good, good. Uh, you're a busy guy. You got a lot going on, I know. Um, multiple bands and uh, some very cool projects currently happening. Um, so I, I don't know where you want to start with, with those. I know uh, probably one of the big, kind of big, really big news was, uh, you know, earlier this year, you joined the Mighty Bonded. I've got their, their most recent album here. I know you didn't play on this, but um, yeah. you joined shortly after. Um, so I was curious, like, how did that come about? How did you, how did you end up in Bonded? Of course, playing with, um, you know, Burnaman of, of Sodom fame and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, what a great band. Oh, uh, with Bonded, um, it's, uh, yeah, long story short, uh, I knew, uh, I knew, um, Burnaman and the other guys for years right now. So it's like, uh, 2001, we did the, uh, Welcome to Your Town tour part two with uh, Sodom, Destruction, and Creator. Nice. And uh, back uh, and back then, um, Bernerman and me, uh, we were talking about uh, one day we have to play music together. Nice. And uh, yeah, after uh, he was out of Sodom, he asked me um, about a new band, and I told him uh, I was so busy with Creator uh, back in the, uh, in the time. So I told him, it's like, uh, I'm really sorry. I don't can do this right now. Yeah, and now it was like, um, what was it? March or something like that. Yeah, he asked me to join the band. Nice. Wow. And for sure. Cool, cool. Well, I mean, it only took 20 years, but you guys got together, which yeah. is great. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I remember reading that a long time ago. Like, I think in a different interview, I, I think I, I remember hearing that, you know, you guys had talked about possibly doing a project someday so it's great that that finally came to fruition i'm uh you know and and uh you know i love the album and i'm excited to see what bonded is going to you know the next step with bonded with with speezy as part of that band i think that, that's going to be yeah, but, um, uh, i did already on the first record uh, oh, one that's, song. that's right i forgot yeah you did play yeah yeah, you was, were a guest, uh, yeah with uh with bobby from overkill together right that's right yeah i totally forgot about that yeah that's correct yeah. yeah very cool stuff very cool stuff um and then of course another big project uh that you're part of is is the band four uh yeah. punk punk project with uh with jeremy kling and, and taylor nordberg and uh as well as um you know brian stevenson yeah. um yeah you guys um, more great material what a killer band um just thank you know, old school you know in your face you know fucking punk it's great as I, I love it it's so good and and that, that you know what a great band i mean you and you know you know with the with those other members you're so tight so fun to listen to and i think you you play off of each other so well um and of course you know jeremy and and you know like yourself jeremy and and taylor are just such professional musicians but also enjoy you know producing killer tunes so it's you know you know I, I I was overjoyed when I found out about four and who the members were. Um, yeah, very exciting. And uh, I was curious, how did that come about? How did you get involved with, with four? Oh, um, there was um, Taylor and Jeremy did the uh, one song, one day. Oh, right. Yeah. Stuff. So, um, uh, so I know, uh, I knew uh, uh, Jeremy and I uh, know, uh, Taylor in person, so he was calling me, and uh, he was like, "Okay, Spies, we have, we have this one thing, one song in one day. You are interested." And I was like, "Yeah, that will be fun." <laughs> so we did this song, and I don't remember. It was like a month later or two months later. Uh, Jeremy asked me, "It's like uh, no." Taylor asked me. He was like, "Jeremy and I we we're, uh, were thinking about uh, doing a." punk band together and he he not even finished his words i was like yep yeah, i'm in <laughs> nice. i'm straight in very cool very cool um i was curious with with four um uh 
you know, and, and that was what, just two years ago. I mean, it, it's a fairly new band and you guys have put out, you know, quite a bit of material, especially for such a new band, but, you know, yeah. full album recently, you know, no. with, the, with the cool, um, I thought it was great that, you know, the cartoon kind of version of, of you guys as, as in rock from, you know, Deep Purple. I thought that was great. Yeah. Yeah, very cool record cover. Um, do you have any? I know. Um, I, I know you're doing some touring, or you have been doing touring with Bonded, and I know Jeremy's currently. You know, he's touring right now. Um, is there any? Are there any upcoming plans for Ford to do any tours in the near future? Well, it's like uh, actually, uh, actually, we had um, two shows this year, but uh, you know, Corona ruined yeah. everything. Yeah. And and it's still uh, over here. Uh, we got the problem over here right now. It's like uh, that um, nobody's showing up to uh, to the smaller shows right now. Oh, really? So uh, um, even bigger bands uh, over here they're canceling the tour right now uh, for the end of the year. For the reason is nobody's buying tickets in advance anymore. Mm. Yeah. That which makes and, it, yeah. and 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 even just one show when you got one show in november or whatever and nobody's buying uh, tickets uh, now you have to cancel the show so you never know if, if someone is showing up or no right yeah frustrating that's very frustrating i'm sure especially yeah know, that's um, that, uh, that's a problem with uh, what we got right now over here in europe right right and i think we're it's kind of we were we were seeing that a little bit here in america for a while but i think it's it's kind of picked back up you know shows seem to be doing better but i know um i was surprised i saw destruction not too long ago and yeah i was surprised how few people were there um especially considering you know it's destruction they haven't been to you know my city for 20 some odd years and you know i get there and there's only like 300 people there which i was very surprised um but yeah hopefully things will pick back up um that that would be that would be great um do, does bonded have anything currently in in you know are you guys doing any shows you got anything going on right now um we are doing the first show in november hmm. nice is that in, in germany, germany? Oh, okay. of course yeah on on a festival it's not announced yet oh okay. it, it is not online right now but it will be happen in november cool very cool. So, yeah, anybody in Germany, keep an eye out. Hopefully, uh, you'll see some news soon because um, that, you know, definitely would be cool. Um, yeah, I would love to see Bonded live. Um, that's 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 one of my goals. I'm I'm hoping you guys get to the states eventually, so uh, so I can see you guys play live. That would be so cool. Yeah, but 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 you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, it's very tricky right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially uh, especially for new small bands. Yeah, to get over to the states. Uh, it's just a possibility um, when we got maybe a, a festival over there. Yeah, yeah. But for single shows, uh, no. <laughs> You're right, right. Yeah, yeah. Very expensive. <laughs> That's yeah. For sure. Um, I want. I want to know if you could uh, maybe take me back in time. Uh, maybe kind of way back in time. I was curious how you originally got started in music and specifically with the bass. Um, did you come from a musical family? Kind of what was your starting path, um, you know, as a musician? Um, a kind of a musician family for my grandmother, her father, he was a violin player. Hmm. And um, also from this side of the family, uh, there was uh, one... Uh, uh, piano player in the, in the church. Oh, okay. So maybe I get it from there. Nice. Yeah, and then it's like, uh, like I think everybody of us starts the same, like a musician. It was like, uh, from my mom, um, she took me to uh, Queen, The Who, Deep Purple, Uriah Heep, and all, all those bands. Oh, nice. And, um, and of course, then 1980, um, we saw the first time Kiss here with Iron Maiden um, supporting Kiss, and of course everybody was like, "Yeah, that's that's what we want to do." All right. Yeah, and then um, yeah, it was like ninety eighty, and I start in what was it eighty five or eighty six, and actually uh, 
uh, um, always want to play drums. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine, he was like, yeah, let, um, let's do a band together. I was like, yes, cool. And um, a day later, he was like, I got another friend. He wants to join us. And I was like, yeah, great. So we're, we're three people. And he was like, yeah, but uh, he already got a drum. Oh, no. And I was like, yeah, great. Ha ha, hilarious idea. And uh, my uncle back then had a bass on his wall. Oh, wow. So I asked my uncle, it's like, um, can I get you a bass? We want to build a band. And he was like, ah, I'm not sure about it. Um, and I was like, oh, come on, please. Yeah. So he gave me his bass. So I started playing bass. Nice. <laughs> and what, what's really funny is, one second. Ah. Yeah, you are. Wait, I switch on the lights. I just restore him right now. Oh, that's the, wow. That's the base. That's, yep. Yeah, that's, that's the base, the yeah. eco base from Italia, where wow. I start on. That is so cool. That's and my uncle lit. asked me right now, it's like... Uh, yeah, uh, can you rebuild the base uh, with everything? And I was like, yes, sure. That is amazing. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful base. Yeah, that's that's the one. <laughs> nice. That's cool. That's cool that you still have it and that you've restored it too. That's great. That's yeah. very cool. I I would imagine. Um, you know, you, you mentioned that you know your uncle was a little hesitant. It sounded like at first to give you the base. I would imagine. You know, a few years later, he was probably pretty proud to know, you know, his yeah, sure. nephew, Every, uh, John Creator. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everybody in uh, in my family was um, proud. Yeah, that's so yeah. cool. How, how and did I never? Oh, sorry. And and I never expect uh, um, to play music for such this long time. It was like a dream, like uh, for everybody else. Uh, yeah, maybe one show or maybe one record one day. And then all happened. <laughs> wow! So you didn't kind of you didn't really see this as a long term thing. Then it was kind of just more for fun and, and yeah, it, just yeah. just for fun. Hey, we were kids with 15, 15, 16 years old. Wow! We're talking about um, 85, 86. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, and and so tell me how how did you go from you know playing in a band with your buddies to you know joining creator one of the the big you know teutonic thrash metal bands of, of germany how did how did that happen how, what was that transition how did you get involved with creator in that was what 94 right yeah yeah uh this uh december 94 yeah okay yeah it was like uh relative easy so um ventor and rob the original bass player they were living uh direct next street where I where I were living with my mom back then, and uh, Miller was just uh, living across his, uh, uh, across the street from me. Wow! With his parents, so we know each other for years and before. And uh, then I did a couple of years. Um, I did lights for a PA company over here. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I did uh, tours with uh, Death Cannibal Corpse, Car Cars. Uh, Oh, wow. Bad Religion, Social Distortion, uh, Jami Rokwai, and stuff like this. And I also worked a couple of times uh, for Creator, even on the Renewal Tour. I was working for them in, in Europe. Oh, nice. And uh, after the Renewal Tour, when uh, uh, when Rob left the band, um, back then they asked me, but um, my whole schedule was, uh, was full with touring for other bands. So they got Andreas Herz then for the uh, for a couple of shows and one U.S. tour when I really remember right. Okay. And after this one, uh, yeah, I was back in my rehearsal room, and they were um, checking new bass players. And all of a sudden, it was knocking on my door, ding, ding, ding. Frank Blackfire was coming in my room, and he was like, um, "Oh, please." 
please, would you try it? We are getting really sick of this situation. Wow. Um, boy, um, we are uh, we are sick of this uh, situation. So um, the creator backstage room was direct next to my uh, uh, to my room. Wow. So it was just for for me. It was just uh, yeah, from one, um, changing the one room to the another one. <laughs> nice. That's really cool. That's amazing. That is great. And of course, um, the the first album you played on was the, the um, you know ninety five cause cause for conflict. Uh, yeah, ninety five. That was the first album with uh, with the with the great Joe Cangelosi, drummer. Yes. Um, so yeah. he joined around the same time as you, or roughly right around that same time. Um, yeah. And of course, he only played on that one album and, and then toured with, but then ended up back in the states. But I know I. I Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you guys have remained friends, right? I think didn't you actually connect him? I've, I, I thought I heard a story that you're the one. Yes, who I did. Him with, with, yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Um, so you were in Creator for 25 years, right? Yeah, 25 years. Yes, 25 years. Was that a difficult transition for you to to move on from creator or had you felt like you know this is the time is now i need to do something different um you know kind of you know i i i've always loved your base work especially in creator um you know i i thought you brought a just such raw energy to the to the base work um but also with a lot of precision too um and especially you know the um the last album you played on the you know uh, this this guy right here this i thought yeah. you know that was some of your in my opinion some of your best bass work um but but you continue to to still make amazing music but anyway sorry i'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead but yeah i was curious was that was that a difficult transition for you to you know after 25 years of being in a band was it was it a difficult transition or were you kind of ready to do something different um you know it's like um let me explain it like this it's it's like in a family. When it's over, it's over. Hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Understand. Understand. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I would imagine it was. It you know you probably look back with you know some some pretty fond memories of and you know I mean you know I mean you you guys conquered the world I mean you know one of the one of the biggest thrash metal bands in in the world and especially in germany i would imagine you know, you've got some pretty amazing memories of, of tours and 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 you know gigs and and album you know recordings and i would imagine that was a you know especially over 25 years that's that's a long period of time to you know be a musician and doing a lot of amazing things uh with a lot yeah, of it's like people. Um, um, for, for me it's like uh when you're talking about it's like um uh, studio stuff or something like that. It's like um, I joined uh, Creator December '94, and we were uh, and we record um, the Cause for Conflict album in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, nice. Come on, I, I was uh, um, I was 24, 25 years, and flying over to Los Angeles, recording in in Burbank, in one of the famous uh, studios, and. Uh, just hanging around um, um, at the corner uh, Sunset and La Brea. There was a hotel back there. And um, what can you wish more for? It's like, yeah. hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that must have been amazing. That must have been a, such an incredible time. I mean, I know, you know, uh, I think we're pretty similar in age. You know, for me, that you know that that those early '90s, you know, early to mid '90s, you know, that that whole thrash scene um you know is near and dear to me you know I've, I've you know that was kind of definitive for me in a lot of ways musically you know and creator was definitely a big part of that you know along with you know some of the classic you know american thrash metal bands like slayer and metallica and megadeth but yeah of course yeah. you know but that it was such a I, it's funny you know i try not to be too nostalgic looking back but it yeah it was a it was definitive i think for me in a lot of ways you know musically and it still shapes the way i listen to music now um was you know that era that time and you know especially you know bands like creator um and and your your you know your base work base work specifically um yeah i think it was just such an incredible time it was so interesting um are there uh 
I would imagine you've got to have some pretty wild stories in terms of tours. I mean, I've seen, I have a DVD of, of creator playing Vakken and the pit is the biggest pit I've ever seen in my entire life. And I think it's an aerial view. Um, I would imagine some of those big festival shows must just be kind of mind blowing being up on stage and just looking out at the sea of humanity. I mean, it's gotta be pretty wild. There was, there was like, um, especially for, uh, for Wacken, there was like, uh, when we record the, uh, album in Berlin, which one was it? Oh, come on. Getting old. <laughs> yeah, but it uh, doesn't matter. It's like, um, uh, Miller was asking me, um, he was like, uh, yeah, we were playing Wacken. I was like, yes, I know we're playing Wacken. And he was like, yeah, but a day earlier, uh, we can play a show. I was like, which would, which show? He was like, a yeah, Wood, Woodstock Festival. Oh. And I didn't know that back then, the Woodstock Festival was in Poland. Oh. The only thing what I, what I know about Woodstock, it's, it's in the States. Yeah. <laughs> So I was looking at him and I was like, you're kidding me. How can we fly from Berlin to the States, play a show there, straight back to Wacken and play a show there? <laughs> I was like, that's, that's, nothing, uh, that's not going to work in time. He right. was like, no, the Woodstock Festival is in Poland, directly um, uh across the border near Berlin. I was like, yeah, sure, we can do this. <laughs> and no one no one of us, uh, no one of us um, heard about the Woodstock Festival before. Even uh, Typo Negative and uh, bands like this, they were playing there before, but we never heard about it. Oh, yeah. So, so we, we asked about um, the stage size and stuff like this, and there was like a stage size that was like, totally ridiculous big and we were like yeah sure everything cool so we asked how much people um, do you guys expect and they were like yeah like every year between 400 to 600,000 people we got a capacity uh, from uh, 1.2 million and we were like what the fuck <laughs> yeah so we played the Woodstock festival and from left to right, and so far you can see, it was just, yeah, just, just packed with people. And then you realize they all moved. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? Next day, now we're com coming to Wacken. Next day we will play Wacken. And every other band is like, wow, Wacken is so huge. Uh, maybe the biggest uh, show what we played. But uh, at, at, at this day, when we played Wacken, it feels like you can say to everyone in the audience, good morning, good morning. So it was so small, <laughs> depends to the Woodstock Festival. Wow, wow. That's wild. I had no idea. So, yeah. Just uh, just just say check it out uh, on um, on YouTube. Uh, I think this year, Arc Enemy was playing there, or last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, All it's right. huge. Yeah, it sounds like it. That sounds yeah, insane. And wow. it's for free. It's free, really. Wow. It's free entry. <laughs> I need to get a ticket to po Poland <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for next summer. That sounds great. That would be cool. Yeah. Wow. That sounds exciting. Um, very interesting. I, I was curious, um, as far as your as your as your bass work, um, and and as well as songwriting, maybe it's maybe it's one and the same. I was curious, like who are the who are the musicians that have inspired you as a bass player? Who are kind of the people you look up to, or the the people you like to listen to? That's probably um, a loaded probably a loaded question, but no, it's like uh, um, my all time favorite bass player was John N. Whistle from the Who. Oh yeah! Wow. What and of course, um, and of course, uh, when I start uh, playing bass, um, the main guy to follow, and I think he's the main guy in heavy metal who every bass player was following back then, and even for today, it's Steve Harris. Yeah, yeah. 
it is what it is yeah he's a monster yeah he's a beast so like yeah it was for me it was like um i tried at the beginning something what john n whistle did and i gave up so <laughs> next step was 100 steve harris nice nice yeah and i think yeah you get that uh, that's one thing i've always liked about your bass work yeah there is that kind of galloping kind of like what steve does that almost sounds like horse hooves you know hitting the ground you know like a, a herd of horses you know um very rhythmic but thunderous it, you know it has, uh, it has to to fit with the drums and with the guitars yeah. something in the middle right right um speaking of that i was curious with you know especially maybe with four you know uh in terms of writing how is that a collaborative effort um how do you guys write do you write together do you does somebody come up with a riff or you know kind of how, how does that work in terms of your writing um it's a uh, it's a moment um it was like uh everybody's uh, throwing in some riffs mm, okay so uh, taylor uh, taylor and jeremy um they are uh, in florida uh, Brian is from uh, Ottawa, Canada, and I'm sitting here in Germany. Right. So, thanks God for those days today. Uh, I work with Logic. Brian is working with Logic, and Taylor and Jeremy they are working with Pro Tools, and all fits together. So we're just sending files back and forth. Interesting. Just yeah, interesting. and even um, the first record. Um, what we did, um, I was recording all my files here, was sending it over to Jeremy and Taylor. Brian was uh, recording all his um, vocals, was sending it to Jeremy and Taylor, and Jeremy and Taylor uh, mixed and mastered everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the first record was all by ourselves, and the next one will be also done all by ourselves. All right. It's it's interesting the yeah the the kind of technology now that allows for that. Do you do you have any? What's the right way to say this? I was curious. Do you struggle with that at all? Is it frustrating? Do you like it? I mean, I've talked to different musicians, and some say they love it, and then others like, well, it's kind of hard because you're not together. Um, um it's it it depends. Um, so it's like uh, for me, it was always like. Uh, when I was recording my bass in the studio, there was most of the time uh, just me and the producer in the room. Oh, okay. So, so it's like not that was, different. Uh, it, 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 it was always when we record the drums for Creator. Mm. We were there with the whole band. Oh, okay. Just for the feeling. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And after, after we record the drums, when I was recording my bass, it was just Andy Sneep or whoever with me in the studio. Start, stop, do it again. No. <laughs> recording. Ah, uh, no, do it again. It was like, <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I was getting used to it. Right. Interesting. Huh. That's interesting. I, so, yeah, I guess, yeah, you... you Oh, it, it 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 seems it's it's interesting to see you know and and then you, you know especially when you look at like you know old like you mentioned like the Who and and some of these older bands where mm -hmm. yeah I mean they would record live a lot of times yeah um, I would yeah. love um, I, I would love to record um, with four the record live mm. totally yeah but it's not gonna happen at the moment right right well I guess I guess possibly with bonded right because you guys are all in Germany correct. Yes, we're all in Germany. Gotcha. So I guess uh, is are are there plans? I mean, I know the last album isn't that old, but um, are there plans for a new album in the in the near future with Bonded? Um, not this year. So uh, we were sitting together. We were talking about this, and uh, first, um, the first record uh, was uh, just out, and Corona hits. The second record was coming out, still Corona. So we got two records that were not promoted live over here right, or worldwide. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense uh, to record right now a third, a third one. Yeah. We got two good albums. Yeah. 
yeah 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 you need to get those yeah you need to play those live that would be cool yeah yeah, yeah. and again yeah hopefully luck of the draw you guys will somehow make it here to the states i would love to see bonded live and um and and for live as well you know so yeah hopefully you know hopefully the the next year will be a lot better for all of us and um and you guys will be able to get out on the road again that would that would be a good thing do you have any um do you have any other projects and anything not that that's not enough but uh, do you have anything else in the works or, or anybody else you're working with right now uh not at the moment okay okay because i know there you was have... like oh sorry there was like uh, uh my my first band we got two demos so i was um talking to the guitar player he was uh, back uh, then also the singer and we uh, we thought about maybe we re-record both of the demos just for fun oh wow but uh yeah but now i'm uh, at the moment i'm really busy with uh with bonded so i have to learn all the old songs mm. the old new songs <laughs> right yeah so, yeah yeah, it's funny. Yeah, and when then, you're old, it's like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, and then we have to start to rehearse, and yeah, then we will see what's happened. Nice, very cool, very cool. Um, well, Speezy, this has been a pleasure. I have one last question for you. Um, so, uh, as you may or may not know, my my page is Brews and Tunes. I pair uh, craft beer uh, with heavy metal albums. So, you know, it's a, it's a Friday night, Speezy, you're hanging out at home, you're crack open a beer and you're spinning an album. What, what are you listening to and what are you drinking? Uh, regular German beer. And, um, the last album, what I spent, um, today was Better Religion Against the Great. Oh, great album. Nice. Yes. Oh, fantastic album. I love that stuff. Well, Speezy, thank you so very much. Um, again, this was a pleasure and an honor chatting with you. One of my favorite bass players of, of all, you know, of all time in terms of, you know, thrash metal and metal in general. So really a pleasure chatting with you. Um, best of luck in the coming year. Hopefully we'll see you on the road soon. Um, so cheers to you, my friend. Yep. Cheers. And thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed.